So I'm going to call to order the uh, March 15th Conway Select Board meeting. Uh, we're doing this by Zoom as usual, and it will be available within a couple days on the um, FCAT uh, video on demand through our YouTube channel. If you go to FCAT Media, and you will find, and you could search for Conway, or you could, uh, you'll probably find it right there uh as on top um so the minutes of the last meeting um did people get a chance uh the agenda says february uh, uh february march 8th february think, march 8th uh so i looked at them okay look oh familiar to me, <laughs> recognizable. Uh, anybody have any, any issues? Uh, no? No, they're great. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve the March 8th minutes of the Conway meeting. Okay. I see a second, and I hear eyes. So we will approve those minutes. Um, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for 478 a uh, thousand ninety eight dollars and ninety three cents a hundred and sixteen thousand six hundred and fifty two cents and eighty eight cents and twenty nine thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and five cents so I, I i did have a question and i don't know maybe this would be something you would know phil but you know the four hundred and seventy eight thousand surprised me and it was like three hundred and seventy eight thousand for frontier and I was just w w wondering what the gigantic frontier expense was all about. Not doubting it, just uh, yeah, it wasn't you know like what? a monthly and, charge, you know. <laughs> the 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 rhythms of, of of the payouts between the towns and the school are uh, like a sort of unique kind of a thing. Um, but that's just sort of the. Yeah, if, if that that's actually that happens multiple months during the year, and I, um, uh, it, yeah, it, it's like, about a quarter. Yeah. It's about a quarter of our uh, of our annual payment to Frontier. Great. Uh, I, 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 okay. Um, if, I mean, for all I knew, you'd say, "Oh, I put the comma in the wrong place," or or something. You know, I just. Um, but anyway, I mean, all the other payments are three thousand and one hundred, and you know, yeah. low numbers. So four hundred, three hundred and seventy-five thousand jumped out. So, uh, so what 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 jumped out at me was the the sixteen thousand in highway expenses to Cargill, and I, I always know Cargill is an agricultural company. Is that's where I used to get large quantities of French fry oil, and they make chocolate. That, that's they import chocolate beans from all over. They're the world's biggest importer of chocolate beans. So I guess they branched out into the universe of road salt and sand or whatever as well. But huh. um, I don't know. I, 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 I was surprised to see that as the main contractor of our highway department road budget. So. Yeah. Do you know, Tom, or I mean, uh, you know, there again, sounds like you're not questioning. It's just a surprise. But. Yeah, it, it is it, it is salt, um, and and there's uh, it it's just a whole bunch of deicer and um, and I guess that's that's all of it. It's all it's all salt deicer yeah. salt ice bulk. So uh, yeah, that, that's what it is. Sixteen thousand dollars worth of salt. Okay, so so we have we have three warrant items. Um, can I get a second? Second. Yeah. Second. Thanks. And uh, we all seem to be voting aye, so yeah. we'll we'll approve those. Um, how about meetings attended by select board members? So Erica, you usually precede us here. Uh, no meetings this week. How about you? No meetings this past week. My God. Well, I will say 
I did not attend any meetings either. So, uh, actually, that's not true. I went to a site visit on Tuesday, and we met with the neighbors of the solar um, facility and uh, seemed to have uh, um, a more agreeable ending to that meeting that they've now followed up with with a with with an angry letter and so uh you know uh, th this is not a select board issue although i think that they may hope to make it one and they could and um it, it's a planning board issue it's not a conservation commission issue so uh, you know uh, we, we we did plan for some follow-ups to that meeting that were going to happen with steps next amp was going to take and then they're going to have uh, another site visit to look and see uh, what those steps remediate and how much more we need to do. So that's how we left it at the end of the meeting and, and uh, um, we'll see where that goes. So, uh, but, you know, thanks. Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's an interesting, that, um, you know, the, 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 the just because somebody said, just because you say something that somebody else feels is contrary to something that they believe or a contrary to their opinion, doesn't make you, uh, that doesn't mean that you insulted them. It doesn't mean that, um, that, that, you know, that, that, that you belittled them. Um, it, it just means that you said that, you, you know, what, to the extent that it is a, 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 a select board issue, you should just remind people that if there's a problem, if there's a, if a result is not satisfactory within the democratic process, the solution is always more democratic process. It's not, it's, it's not um, demonizing people that you think disagree with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, and where this is going is the planning board and the planning board has had hearings on how to change the solar bylaws for future projects. And um, in general, I felt like the same, and, 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 and the planning board is looking to be more specific about what some of these terms mean that are not precisely defined. You know, what does it mean that there is shielding? Or, you know, what does it mean to say there's 30 feet of, of plantings or 30 feet of vegetation, or I'm not sure exactly what's in the planning board in the zoning laws, but to try to make that much more specific uh, than what we have now. So I think they'll do that. Uh, but, but as I say, right now, this isn't a select board issue, but, but it was a meeting I attended and, um, and if, if I may take a moment here, because I don't know quite where to squeeze this in on the meeting, you know, it was, it was while I was at the site visit that my wife died in a, in, in a skiing accident. Uh, my wife died while she was skiing at Berkshire East. And uh, I'm a little upset with an article in the recorder that to me seemed to imply that there might have been negligence in general about Berkshire East. And it's not at all the case. I believe my wife died from something like um, a stroke while she was skiing. Um, she died um, and then fell down, I believe. And I won't get the results back from the autopsy for about 90 days. Um, but but I but I'm a little upset that 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 I don't want anyone to think that 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 we are we are viewing Berkshire East as at all at fault. And you know it's a it's it's a wonderful um, uh, addition to Western Massachusetts. And my wife loves skiing there because. She could go there and see all of her Conway friends or Ashfield friends or Charlemont friends who were also skiing there. And she went and skied there every day. And, uh, and, and what happened is a tragedy. And, and I really want to thank all the folks from town who have 
knocked on our door and given us massive quantities of both um, horrible and delicious pastries and uh, and then and a, and, and a good quantity of delicious uh, pies and uh, I mean uh, um, uh, lasagnas and and, and uh, chicken pot pies or things that, that 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 we all can eat and my kids are home and uh, it's wonderful to have them at home uh, and and we will all get through this and sometime this summer we will have a big party here and a memorial service and and I hope people come and tell stories of about my wife good or bad whatever it, you know they're all the stories that we all know um and it's horrible but uh but it did happen and and uh uh and i find it uh, uh and, and i didn't find out about it until i got home quite a bit later from my site visit and and the thought that it was happening while i was on on a site visit seems uh, just coincidental but terrible okay um any public comments i uh, no public comments from Conway. Okay. Um, so for, for old business, Tom, do you want to talk about the, uh, what's going on with the interim and possible permanent um, uh, town administrator positions? Uh, sure, just briefly. Um, uh, Steve Dinkelacker came away from last week's select board meeting um, uh, with, with, um, I, I, and and uh, and and he had further um, uh, further discussions with uh, Trisha Van Casey, and 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 we decided to put um, after originally posting open until filled. He felt we'd get we'd get more applicants sooner if we gave a deadline. So we gave the deadline of of Monday, March 29th, um, for uh, for either position. It's still advertised for either position. So I I got MMA to update that on their website free of charge, which was actually awfully nice of them. Um, so that's that's where we stand there now. Um, they have inter they have interviewed two people who have applied for the interim position already. They'll be interviewing two people for the uh, permanent position uh, this coming Thursday, and um, then that that gives them just a little bit over a week for uh, for other applications to come in. We we've had at least one other application since then, so. Um, we're hoping to be able to provide you with uh, with a short list of candidates that are still, um, you know, good who, who would be reasonable in the position. I, I think we've gotten about um, uh, s seven or eight applications so far. Uh, two of them specifically for the interim position, and the rest either um, e either wanting either position or the or the permanent position. So uh, I look forward to. Um, uh, closing this process out um, before the end of the month and then having whatever interviews need to be had. And look, so it looks like things are pretty much on track. That's, that's uh, the update for that position. So, so I, what I'm wondering about, I'd like to love to hear what you guys think, but would it make sense to have an interview or two in advance? I mean, it, um, uh, interviewing is not something that I have done a lot of in my life. Is it something that would be good to practice on? Um, you know, perhaps interview somebody for the interim position uh, before we have a bunch of people interview for the permanent position? Yeah. So you're, you're muted. So, I so yeah, so, so um, the I'm actually enjoying the respite from the from the hiring committee because I feel like I've been like nonstop hiring with I mean, I'm third superintendent, business manager, that everything, principals, everything. So, but the, the 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 way that's always worked really best for us when we did it um, in the schools, the committee meets about the questions that they want to ask in advance. And, and they draw up a list of questions, or even if it's not word for word questions, a list of specific areas of concern or topics. And, and 
And then you allocate who's going to be asking those questions so that you walk around the room so that there's not one person dominating the interview. Um, and, and, and then, uh, you know, and, and that way you've given sort of an equal shot for every single applicant um, and that it, it, it cuts down on the unconscious biases that plague us all. So, um, and, that's and, th and that is how we've been doing it in the, in the preliminary screening committee. And I'd be happy to work with the board on, on either, either the same list of questions or, a, or a, uh, or a refined list of questions, um, before you start interviewing. So that's all that okay. maybe we could have them straightened out or, you know, agreed on before two weeks from now, and then maybe invite some candidates in on the 29th. Um, and there will be, and then I expect there will be more. But but we do have a number of candidates uh, that the com that the screening committee has already talked to. Uh, and and I would suggest that we ask the screening committee to pick the top three. You know, what 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 they should be doing is is when they ask the questions, there's a little scorecard, little little line for a score right next to it. And each member of the committee, as they're ask, as the questions are being asked to each applicant, is 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 writing down the score contemporaneously as it's happening, um, and and then you add up the score at the end of the interview, and the highest score is who, it, it, whatever, and, and you talk about it. That's and, and then the the top the top three or whatever make it to the next. To the, to the next round. It, I, I do know that just from like, if you're talking about like half an hour or 45 minute or an hour interviews, like three in a row is a lot. It, it, is it's about, lot. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot, but that's like about as much as you'd want to take it. Um, so. And would, would you folks be interested in um, perhaps having a, a separate night allocated to interviews? Yeah. For sure. And, and Tom, right now I believe we have we have two two interim candidates, and we could, we could get a review of those from the interim from from the preliminary screening committee. Uh, yeah, well, let's let let's wait till till we have uh, a, a better list before before discussing what we have because okay. otherwise. Okay. We, we might get confused. And, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm I'm wondering how not to get confused between people interviewing for the interim position and people interviewing for the permanent position. Uh, uh, that that will be very clear. The 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 committee will will make that clear when they forward the the names. Great. Okay. Um, and 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 if there's more than three thought whatever, I'm open to you know. Three is just a limit on, on in, in any given evening that I would want to do. I'm 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 open to having more than one meeting to do that if the committee feels that there's more candidates that, that are worthy of the next step. I just don't want to do more than three in one night. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, budget update, Tom. Uh, I, I think I'm going to wait till we. Uh, there's only really one thing, and and we can actually cover that a little bit later, and and that'll be helpful. Okay. Uh, so we have a number of appointments, um, and uh, I, I believe Ro Robin Yurks is not able to attend the meeting tonight, but but he is hi she. highly uh, she. 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 she I, and she's I, awesome. I don't know her, but oh. yeah, highly yeah, recommended by Pat and. and yeah, she, she's she's awesome, and um, another in a long string of excellent recruits that have been uh, snagged. So um, she's a neighbor of mine. So yeah, she's so I'm going to make a motion that we appoint her uh, yeah. to the Council on Aging. Her term expires June 30th, 2024. Second thought. She's got Pat's recommendation. Yeah, me too. Okay, we all say aye. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I, I don't know if if Tammy Bennett is on the call. I no, I I was um, I I oh, oh. I I wasn't able to get get in touch with her. She she used to be the notary for town here, um, and uh, so so I know her. And and uh, so this is a recommendation from the town clerk, Lori Lucier. Uh, so uh, and, and to, to act, but Bob, Tam, to, they they live right across the street from me. 
<laughs> your neighborhood. And, is yeah, and and so and hard. she 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 she's um she's she's awesome. She's awesome. Um, was, was there an issue over whether we actually need to appoint Lori's registrar? Uh, I I think it would I think it would not hurt at this point. And Lori did ask us to, so I think she believes it is necessary. Great. Um, yeah. Any other issues? Uh, I'm not no, I'm, any. I'm, so I'm going to make a motion. We appoint Tammy Bennett to the board of registrars for a term expiring June 30th, 2022. Yeah. Uh, great. Second. Um, second and everyone's nodding their heads. Um, we, there are two community preservation committee appointments. One is uh, Don Drolleman, who's here. Uh, hi, Don, do you want to say a few words? Um, sure, just that I'm happy to serve in this capacity and I would like to put the experience of uh, working on the board for the Franklin Land Trust to work in a different context. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for yeah. um, agreeing to serve on what sometimes is a contentious committee and, and uh, and it'll be be wonderful to have you. You you don't say that till after they've been oh. appointed. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so no no other issues here. So uh, I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Donald Drolleman as uh, the the select board can no uh, yeah as the select board appointment. So so okay. Uh, um, for the term expiring June 30th, 2024. I'm Second. seeing a lot of nodding. I hear a second. So I'm going to say that's unanimous. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. And, Thank you. Um, we'd like to appoint Carol and Thayer, who is currently on the Council of Aging, and she's going to be there, uh, appointed to also be their representative on the Community Preservation Committee. Yeah, so this is where I uh, this is where I'll give my little update on the warrant. Um, Janet Shays kindly reminded me that the way uh, the bylaw is written, the appointments actually come from various bodies. So the select board actually doesn't have to appoint her. Um, however, the bylaw is written, uh, I don't think very clearly. So one of the things that I've done is come up with a uh, another proposed amendment to the bylaws, well, it, it uses the terms appoint and designate interchangeably. And I would propose making all of the references say appoint, just so that there's no question as to who the appointing authority is. It mentions the appointing authority, but then it talks about committees designating members. So I think it's clear from the context of the bylaw that it means, for instance, that the Council on Aging can appoint a member. And I think it just needs to be clarified in the bylaw. So I've provided some language for that that, that we can look at um, as, we, uh, as we close out the warrant um, in the next week or two. I always thought that that just meant that a committee can designate someone for the select board to appoint. Well, uh, that had been my original understanding, too. But I, I looked it over um, uh, af after Janet had written in. And I think that the clear meaning, if, if you look at um, especially section, I think it's section C, um, is, is the one that then refers back to all of these different appointments that get made. Uh, so... You know, if if it's if it's controversial, we'll find out at town meeting. Um, but um, my understanding is that 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 is um, uh, how it happens. It, it it only mentions the select board as the appointing authority once. Well, and I, I like that language, though, Tom. You know, to designate for appointment. Um, it, it, well, if that's if if that's what it is. Um, then I like that too, Bob. That's like not. That then that's not what what um, Janet was talking about, which means that we should appoint Carolyn just to be sure. Yeah, I, I'm good. all for appointing her. Um, uh, uh, 
you know, the, to me, the question is, does the committee have the authority to designate somebody to be on another committee without the select board approval? And, you know, they certainly have the authority to designate someone. The question is, who does the actual appointment? Uh, because that that's what's in the that's what's in the bylaw. Again, the, the terms seem to be used interchangeably, but but you know there there's a reason that words are there, and I'm more than willing to take another look at it too. It it seemed to me, uh, based on one of the sections, that the meaning was a point. Uh, but but uh, you know I'll I'll put it on the agenda for next time, and we can talk about it. Okay. Uh I'm just not sure, you know, I mean, I, I like the idea. I mean, we really encourage committees to designate somebody to, to be the representative from their committee on another committee. Um, and do those people require actual appointment I, or, or is that enough? Well, the, I believe this the one's written into the bylaw. Yeah. The, this one and others are written into our bylaws. So we need to make sure that they're written correctly, whichever, whichever way it yeah. should be. Okay. I, I favor the interpretation that you gave to it, though, Bob. I think that's the way to go. So, okay. Let, let's 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 try let's let let's see if that how that flies. You can you can yep. try to see if you can write it like that. That'd be great. Um, and uh, and Tom, do you want to talk about this application for community preservation funding? in the event that the phase one funding is successful? Speaking of the Community Preservation Committee? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I think that if, uh, if we do go forward um, with purchasing any property that needs an environmental assessment, uh, we know we can get funding for phase one uh, for at least one property from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments this would allow us to use money that uh, uh, is that currently exists for the phase two, which is much more expensive. The phase one is usually about five thousand. The phase two usually starts at about fifteen thousand. And because of the the nature of the parcel, um, uh, fifteen thousand seems to be a good number to uh, to ask for. So that's uh, that's what I would do, and I included the draft of what the application would be. So um, uh, I think it's it it should be uh, a pretty easy thing for the select board to uh, to agree, since I think everybody's in favor of the 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 final goal of this is getting more uh, land into our uh, flood protection program. Do you know when this would happen? About when we would get the result of phase one? Uh, no. First, the first thing we have to do is is come to an agreement to buy the property. Yeah. Uh, or, you, you know, so uh, we'll we'll see whether or not it moves. I mean, there's been a lot of optimism expressed in the past, and um, it it's still available. So we'll. We'll see. This is in preparation for if we need it. You know, if we don't use it, it just goes back into the into that fund. So yeah, yeah, great. So so is this so this is the select board apply? This would be the select board applying for the CPA money, not the select board approving. See, I mean, I just remember last year how been out of shape certain people were about the select board voting approval for a CPA item when the CPA itself had not yet voted for it and that uh, I don't want to repeat that mistake well I mean come send us the proposal no, form yeah the, filled out oh. yeah the, the, this is this is applying for something that they would then approve okay. okay and then we would have to approve it then after then then we would recommend it Right. Uh, for the right. Right. on the right. warrant, okay. yeah, yeah. Last year we recommended something before it was approved by the CPA committee, but probably on my advice. So oh. I mean, it's okay, <laughs> but um, you know, okay. Um, 
so Tom, are you, should we vote on this? You looking for a vote? I mean, uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Know, you. I mean, it feels like this is something that we should we should you. Know, What's the, what's the number about that enough. we're at? 15, what's, the, what's the number? 15, what's the number 000. being asked for? We get fifteen thousand. Fifteen. So this just means that we've that, that we're in favor of applying for this money if the CPA votes for remediation at that property. So we just like right. have to right? first. First, we have to. Buy the property, right? And then FERCOG is willing to put up the money for the first phase, and if that still proves successful, this would be having money available that's been approved approved by the Community Preservation Committee that we could use for the second phase. Okay. If if we get that far. Yeah. Yeah. So. God willing, and if the creek don't rise. Well, <laughs> but the creek has a way of rising. Sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that we approve this application for funding from the CPA committee for the phase two uh, assessment um, if, if it gets as far as needing it. In other words, if we buy the property and the phase one doesn't show that we, you know, that, 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 that there are significant reasons not to proceed. Yeah, I'm in favor. So I, I'll take that as a second then. Uh, um, yeah, I, sure. I guess that's an I and I'll vote I. So uh, you know, and and I will really hope that we do get this far. But uh, who's going to who's going to take it? To, who's going to be at the CPA meeting to advocate for it? Somebody has to. It's a select uh, uh, board. It's a select. I, I, I will board. if it comes to that. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Items not anticipated in uh, uh, forty-eight hours in advance of the meeting. Any Tom? Any anybody? Yeah, all that stuff about, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, shoot, um, the the trust funds. The and I don't know how well you got to take a look at all at all of that the spreadsheet that was put together. I did not. So, um, because that's that's going to be coming up on Thursday. As well, we got the meeting Thursday, the joint meeting with Finance and School Committee. Yeah, and and so, um, and and as you know, this the situation is that the playground bid came in at three seventy nine. The uh, amount approved, the amount approved was two fifty. So they they asked they asked us for the one twenty nine in the um, for, for, you know be, because the playground the, the structural repairs being made for the benefit of handicapped children to use the language in the trust um and and so there there was the one the one germane the, the main germane trust that has been used for scholarships um for, for for many years has the balance of 550 or something um and and and, and tom forwarded a long history um of all, of all of those disbursements as they've been made. But but when you look at the, he also forwarded the language used in each of those trusts. And when you looked at the language, Bob, the, 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 the trust exists for two reasons, one for college scholarships and two for the benefit of uh, handicapped children of Conway. Of needy so, handicapped children in Conway. Is there any other kind? I, I, I mean, uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Like, so. Okay. Um, the, 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 uh, so just my, the, the, what I just, when looking at it, there, there's a long history of expenditures, um, from, from that every year. It's, I was on, I, I didn't receive any, um, list of any expenditure for the, on, in that second category ever. So, so that's, that's the one, uh, trust to look at. The other one is, is the, uh, the secondary germane fund 
which has a balance a uh, little over a hundred thousand right. dollars, and that right. only exists for one purpose, and that's for the the handicap the, the handicapped children for the benefit of the handicapped children. As near as I could tell, there's never been a disbursement out of that. So, um, so between the two of them, and, and then there was a third one that caught my interest too, just because it was a how the Howland Fund, and the Howland Fund was set up for the uh, uh, to assist with purchasing appurtenances for the Conway Academy. And so the, the Conway Academy ceased to exist in the 1880s, I believe. So, uh, and um, that was probably one that was set up with like a dollar in the 1850s or 60s. And, and I'm pretty sure there hasn't been an expenditure out of that fund in 150 years. <laughs> um, and now that's at 25,000. And we don't have an academy anymore, but we do have a school and it's got some appurtenances out back that need replacing. So, um, you know, I, I, either, you know, if we can't use that, something like that for this, then, then we have to, then we should go to a court and have it be uh, asked to have it be returned to the general fund because it has obviously been sitting there for 150 years without being used. And that's at 25,000. So between the three of them, I, I, I would hope that we could, I don't know, do something, you know. So let me propose a motion and you can see what you think. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not going to be able to state the real numbers, but we could, we could nail them down. But I, so I propose that we take half of the Howland Fund and split the rest between the other two funds. There's enough for, if we split the rest, I think there's enough in both of those funds to cover that. And, and it'll leave some money in both of those funds. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, oh. for the future. And, and, and it, it'll take, uh, you know, 75000 or so, I think, from the, the big germane fund. And so that'll hurt the scholarships a bit, but but there'll still be money there, uh, you know, to grow. And normally we think of that as a fund that that grows <laughs> due to our high interest rates that we have right now. Um, so anyway, that would that would that would be a, a, a kind of proposal that 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 feels uh, good. I agree. So, so Tom, do you think you could work up what those numbers would be, and we could vote on it maybe next week, or or Thursday? We could, we could or or yeah, you know, we could vote on it Thursday. That's true. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um. Right, because yeah, and that meeting has been posted as a joint meeting. Just yeah, just yeah. going through things in yeah, my mind. Right. Yeah, let let me. Um, I, I I'm not sure I got all the details, but it it'll be in the yeah in the recording and 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 maybe uh, so yeah. And it was uh, just for the record, the Howland was a thousand dollars. Started off at a thousand. Okay, that was. That was such a vitally important correction, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> well, well, it might be. Uh, but, but actually, you know, that that actually it is kind of neat. I'm, I'm impressed that you knew that. Well, the other fund started at like 25,000, and so they've grown nicely yeah. also. And it shows what uh, shows that all, all the kids ought to get the lesson that that starting a savings plan early and Compound interest is a, is a very good thing. Okay, how about a town administrator update, Tom? Sure. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll be working on the uh, clarification of the appointment authorities and community <laughs> preservation bylaw. Um, I've been working with Pat Lynch on helping her 
get the Finance Committee to consider a request for a transfer from the Reserve Fund for their foot care clinic. Uh, also, Pat believes the reason they're running short of funds is due to the pandemic, so I've asked her to identify any particular costs so that we can get reimbursed through CARES or the recent American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA. Uh, that's committee news. In departmental news, I received an email from Ron Kohler of Ashfield who urgently requested a letter of support for an EEA dam construction grant application uh, for 875000 towards a 1167000 project. Uh, based on the board's letter of support last year, I wrote the letter on my own behalf. It was due Friday, so there was no time to ask the board. Uh, please ask Mr. Kohler directly for any details of the application. Uh, the town of oh uh, yes, the town of Conway may use up to about five hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars from the American Rescue Plan Act. This is primarily for reimbursing costs related to COVID, though it also includes necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. This could conceivably include better connectivity between the town hall and town office the installation of permanent cameras and wiring for FCAT recording, and the necessary equipment for providing for a robust linkage to a town meeting overflow room or rooms. Other ideas are welcome. The money will come in two tranches, the first in two or three months, the second about a year after that, and will have to be spent by December 31st, 2024. Uh, Mary Wigmore has won the contract for the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership grant to do a carbon credit market study for Conway residents. Yay. We are negotiating a, We are negotiating a contract and I expect to have it for you to sign next week. Great. And I'm working with Kimberly McPhee at the FERCOG for another round of municipal vulnerability preparedness plan grant uh, projects including continuing the current South River activity for which our current grant ends June 30th and also to include land acquisition. So that's my update. Do you think we could extend uh, COVID expenses to something related to the pandemic? Uh, I, I mean, the foot care and is there early? Everyone yes. being home? Yeah. And, uh, I, 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 I don't know. She she seemed to think that, that some of the costs they were incurring were COVID related, so I've asked her to identify those. Yeah. And yeah. if we if we can match them to any particular invoice, we'll shift that over into the uh the COVID column and probably be able to take care of it with CARES money. Yeah. Uh because yeah. we're 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 still working on bringing that, you know, spending that. And, and now we've got this extra huge amount of money that that is possible to spend on not just COVID-related stuff, but also broadband infrastructure. It, and we, it's other stuff too. I mean, that that you can make direct grants to residents and businesses mm -hmm. in your town for COVID expenses for for. Because everybody, because every resident and every business has been hurt by COVID, and it's explicit. The, the statute explicitly states that that they're that they're they're encouraging municipal grants, um, to to resident to affected residents and affected businesses. So. So people that lost their job due to COVID could apply. For, yeah, for for every, you know, you could, you could grant. You could grant, you could send that out to every man, woman, and child, or every human being um, uh, in town could get a check, or every business, or whatever. There's my whole point being is that um, we're not returning that money to the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not doing that. We, and it's not, a, it's, it's not nearly enough. We still need more. But it is nice. Yeah. It'd be it'd be really great if we could fix roads with it. 
How about select board member comments? Any concerns? No. You and your family are in my I think thoughts. we yeah. I, well, I, I think yeah. I think we just had Phil's comments on ARPA. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Todd, you want you said there's a a letter that you got from FERCOG about the Deerfield River. Yes, and I I, I did forward that as part of the package. Um, they, you know, they they they've had a project to look at recreation up and down the Deerfield River Valley. Every once in a while, I forwarded something that says, here's an opportunity to be involved. And, you know, um, typically we haven't been very much involved with Deerfield River uh, items, except, uh, you know, there was the the tubing questions that came up. So, you know, that, that would be one way for us to, to uh, get involved um and the other uh the other thing i know is that always uh in uh the end of conway station road there are there are questions about how people are treating that property so it seemed to me that there might be a couple of ways that um that the town would would be interested in at least keeping track of what's going on with uh you know the uh as a stakeholder, there's there's two different groups. There's a there's a short term sort of seasonal group, which might be better to be in because we're only interested really in the summer season. And then there's a long term stakeholder group as well. Uh, but I I thought I'd bring it up and and I did share that email with you. Um, and it, so if you or anyone else knows anybody who would like to get involved with with those issues, um, it's just another opportunity to, to have uh, voices from the town heard. So is FERCOG putting together a, a, a committee or a, some kind of a, a subgroup to look at these that we would send a rep to? Yeah, I advise you to read the email. It's been going on for some time, and they and they're they're here. formalizing part of it. I can't find the email, Tom. I, I don't recall it, but I have been having a hard time uh, keeping track of my email this week. It, I, I don't think it was with the um, with the email with the agenda and the minutes. Right, right. It was. If you could send that again, Tom, that would oh. be great. Sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Uh, any other announcements? Okay. So our next meeting is next Monday, March Thursday. Thursday. Uh, oh, our, Thursday. right. Our next meeting, yes. Uh, we're having an official meeting on Thursday. That's six o'clock, was it? I think. Yes. Yeah, six o'clock. On, on Google Meet. On Google Meets, and we will get a link. Or maybe we have one, but you have one. Okay. Google Meet. Yeah. We'll see you Thursday, and hopefully we'll vote on the uh, on the playground equipment grant. So. Well, that'll have to get. Uh, Tom, could you amend the uh, the posting for the Thursday meeting to include? The playground grant. It's on it already. It's on there already. Yeah. Well, the issue's on there already. Uh huh. But okay. That I saw. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn for today. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob.